Welcome to Joel's Vision Ministries, where we learn the how, what, and why of children's ministry, also known as Kidman. I'm Sarah Vitasek. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be talking about three ways to avoid ministry burnout. So let's dive in. You know, ministry burnout is a real problem because we are always giving of ourselves to others, to children, to whatever ministry you're involved in. You're constantly giving and giving and serving. And that is necessary. And the Bible calls us to serve and give of ourselves. But how do we avoid this ministry burnout? It is something that when you have ministry burnout, you might feel like you're shutting down in your mind. You might feel brain fog, um, like you don't have any passion or excitement for the ministry that you're involved in. It's a true thing. It really happens. But we want to avoid that. So I'm going to give you three different ways that have really helped me avoid that. Now, that doesn't mean that it's foolproof. It doesn't mean that you'll never feel burnt out and, and need a break. But for the most part, I've been doing children's ministry for 28 years now, and I don't know of a specific time besides maybe when I had one of my children, since I have four of them, that I took a short break. But there wasn't a time when I asked to be taken out of my ministry because I needed a break from it. Um, there's ways to avoid that so that you can continue to serve and give of yourself for the Lord and his work. So number one, the very most important thing, and I think if you have only this one, even just this one by itself, can help you avoid ministry burnout. You need to get into God's word and spend time in prayer. Now, this isn't just about picking up your Bible and reading a couple verses and, and you know, giving the Lord a list of things that you need. This is about really spending time with Jesus. So there's different ways that you can do this. Obviously, reading your Bible is very important and spending time in prayer is very important. But along with that, you need to learn to get your Bible and to focus on him and let him speak to you. If you only read half a chapter, if you only read three verses, or if you read five chapters, let the Lord talk to you through his word. It's not just words on a page. It's a living word of God that can minister to your soul so you don't fall into the burnout trap. And when you go to him in prayer, you know, we have so many needs. We all do. We have friends that have needs. Our churches have needs. We have so many things we need to talk to the Lord about. But how often do we stop and take time for him just to speak only to us? Stop talking and listen. Let him minister to your heart. Let him minister to your mind and minister to you the things that you need for your spirit to continue on in ministry for him. You know, I always teach my staff, we have to minister out of our overflow. If we're constantly giving and pouring out ourselves, our Holy Ghost and God's anointing gets lower and lower in our lives unless we're refilling. We have to refill our spirits. We have to refill our minds with him, with his words, with his anointing. And so you picture a bottle and you're filling it up and then you dump out a little here and a little there and a little there. It doesn't automatically refill itself, right? You have to go back and fill it till it's overflowing again. If you minister from your overflow, what's coming out of your spirit, it's because you have so much anointing that it's overflowing onto those around you. But if you're constantly giving and giving and giving and not refilling, pretty soon you're going to be empty and burnt out. So that's number one. Getting into God's word, spending time in prayer, but listening to him. Don't just marking it off a checklist that you got it done today. Let him speak directly to your soul through what you're reading into your mind and into your heart when you're praying and listen to him. Number two is Bible journaling. 
You may have seen um, on Facebook, my Joyce Journals group, it's because that's one of the things I love to do to help myself to stay away from burnout. So I have a couple different Bibles I love to use. This Bible is called She Reads Truth. I added these tabs to make it fun. And this Bible is what I like about it is it has wide margins so that you can write notes right in here. Sometimes I will write ideas for children's messages, object lessons, things like that, that I might want to use in the future. Sometimes I might just write things that the Lord is speaking to me about. I might underline the verses and write some notes that he's speaking to me about that day. So I love to take this Bible and, you know, one goal I have made is to underline one thing, just one thing in every single chapter in this Bible. And it doesn't have to be some earth shattering thing, but that's the way that I'm trying to let the Lord really speak to me through his word. And so I try to write one thing that I want to really think about that day in every chapter in the Bible. Another one is, um, this is another Bible that I'm using, and this one I use for journaling. Now, when I, more than just taking notes, so this other one I was talking about, this one I take notes in. I write things down that I'm thinking about. This one I do when I'm stopping to really meditate on God's word. So I might be um, drawing things and I choose a verse here and then I draw something to go along with it. I might here I'm writing quotes about leadership, things that I come across and I find. Now, not everybody likes to draw and I am by far not an artist. So yeah, don't, don't, don't t look too closely at the things that I make. But these are things that a lot of times I find them online. Other people have done them and I just get an idea of something that I like and I um, draw it. I draw it with pencil. I use colored pencils and then I, um, I can really think about what I'm reading. Think about God's word when I'm just coloring. You know, have you seen all the adult coloring books going around now? That's because it's a time to relax your mind and to meditate on something, and hopefully it would be meditating on God. And that's what I do with this journaling Bible. So I take my time to do that. I don't always do that every single day. Uh, that's more a quiet, relaxing time. Another thing, um, the, I guess that's number two, Bible journaling. And you can do, you know, you can do note taking, you can have a journal separate from your Bible that you like to write notes, things that the Lord's talking to you about. But at Bible journaling and meditating on his word is a great way to help you avoid burnout. Number three is sometimes a little bit um, unsure, I guess, because I hate to say that the world we live in has gotten so selfish. We're selfish with our time. We're into entertainment and we always have to have fun and enjoy life. But you know what? There is a time and place for that. I don't believe that you should be always looking for the newest, greatest entertainment to keep you satisfied and happy. But we do need hobbies. We do need things that we like to do for ourselves. It's not selfish if it's held and kept within perspective. It is not selfish to do something fun. It's not selfish to enjoy doing a hobby like reading or spending time outdoors or fishing like my husband and boys love to do. It's not selfish to do that if it's done within the right time frame. Your whole entire focus of life should not be around that because you should be focusing on ministry. But it's okay and it's necessary to do something like that for yourself to avoid burnout. One way that I like to do that is I do like to read and I don't always read study books. <laughs> I like to read Christian fiction where I can just rest my mind, not really think about what I'm reading and just kind of get into the story. I also like to make handmade journals. I like to go up to my craft room and spend a little time just designing and creating. I love doing that. I might listen to some audio dramas or something like that while I'm creating. 
There's so many different things you can do as a hobby. Another thing I love to do is I'm a violinist. I love to play in the symphony. That's one thing as I got busier and busier with a family, that's one thing I held on to because it was what my one night a week to go to rehearsal, a three hour rehearsal, just enjoy playing music with other musicians. And so there's different things that you can do that can be for you to renew and refresh your body, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your energy, your mind. We need that. And it's okay. Just keep it within perspective. Don't let that be your focus of your life. Let that be something that you do to help yourself stay focused on your ministry. So quick recap. Number one, get into God's word. Spend time reading and praying. Spend time with Jesus. Do that every day. Don't worry about the amount of time. It can be a few minutes as long as it's good quality time with him. Number two, journaling, Bible journaling, writing notes, writing things down, how the Lord speaks to you, coloring in your Bible, um, doing so you can meditate on his words and his verses that he gives you. Number three, hobbies, stuff that you like to do for yourself to kind of restore and refresh yourself. I hope that was helpful for you today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you again next time.